once again, I'm with you on a Monday discussing the uh, officiating in the NFL. When clock's not rolling, flag on the play to pick it up. Not when the clock's rolling. Replay assists should be there, and the league should absolutely use it this year the nfl has had the worst officiating in nfl history some games it feels like the refs can't go more than 60 seconds without having to throw a flag in other games it feels like players can do basically anything they want on the field except for throwing punches but if a player does throw a punch the other player will probably get penalized for it at least that's what happened to kyler gordon this year you can even hit some quarterbacks out of bounds this year and their team will be the one getting penalized this year football is feeling more like ref ball and the answer isn't just because the refs are calling more penalties. The truth isn't that simple. In fact, truth will make you more angry than a game-saving blown call on your favorite team. But before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. That'll be all that out of the way. Break! prove myself to you at this point then check this out on thursday night football these are all the people that made money by following my prize picks for free on instagram i give out my picks for free each and every night and if you end up tailing me and hit green i shout you out like this right now when you use my promo code microphone you could double your deposit up until a hundred dollars on prize picks and thank you prize picks for the sponsor mike check one two one two what's going on everybody around the start of the 21st century the NFL took steps to increase offense in the league. This included more rules that benefited the offense, meaning longer, more sustained drives that led to points, which in turn would result in more excitement, which then could potentially result in a higher viewer retention. Very simple. However, in the past two years, the NFL has taken very clear steps to call less penalties on defense. According to Warren Sharp, from weeks one through six in the years of 2019 to 2021, there was an average of over 4,000 700 penalty yards on defenses league-wide. In 2022 and 2023, that number has nosedived to just under 4,300 yards. And although that might not seem like a lot, that's over a 400-yard difference, which also explains why NFL offenses are scoring the lowest points per game since 2009. But just because there are fewer penalties on the defense doesn't mean the quality of the referee should decrease, right? Well, of course, but the NFL is trying to hide something from both fans and teams. The reason why they're hiding it is just down right confusing but not as confusing as when nfl referees allow Jawan taylor to commit false starts every single snap of week one that's right i'm sure you guys remember this it may have seemed like a long time ago but it was really only three months ago during week one when the kansas city chiefs wanted to kick off the brand new season against the up-and-coming detroit lions right tackle Jawan taylor left early not once not twice not even five times but basically every single snap of the game not only did he jump early in the game he wasn't even lined up correctly on the line of scrimmage. Now, none of these penalties were called, which I suppose if none of them were called, you can make a reasonable argument as to why they weren't called, I guess. At least there's some consistency here. But the thing that made this all the more confusing was the fact that Jawan Taylor would finally get called for a false start on the final play of the game, setting up the Kansas City Chiefs for fourth and 25. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Mike, I'm sure if you go throughout the history of the NFL, we'll find a poorly officiated game here and there but this has been a trend that has been going on all season long for example how about when the raiders completed a 45 yard pass on a play that was flagged for pass interference and when the play was overturned to incomplete the referees refused to enforce the pass interference penalty leaving the raiders right where they started how does that even make sense there's no chance that that's in the rule book or how about the time that minka fitzpatrick got a roughing the passer call for sacking jimmy garoppolo and hitting him in the shoulder pads in the same exact week, Raheem Mostert didn't just stiff arm DJ Jones. He took his helmet, ripped it off, and threw it to the ground, all while being tackled. And the play resulted in no flag? Okay, maybe that week was an outlier, right? Maybe at this point, you just happen to be a diehard fan of NFL referees. Or maybe you're influenced by referee burner accounts. I'm not here to judge you, but perhaps Sauce Gardner might. Because the very next week, Sauce Gardner was one-on-one -on -one with Marquez Valdez-Scantling and locked him up with perfect coverage 
damage, which resulted in his teammate grabbing an interception. Oh, never mind. Apparently, that's a holding call. Okay, but surely the referees can at least keep track of the clock correctly, right? Just look at Jordan Love snap the ball two seconds after the quarter ended. And while you might be thinking, Mike, one play isn't going to make a difference. You would complete a bomb to Jaden Reed, and I'll let you decide whether or not the referees were even looking at the game clock. Okay, so we've established that the referees can't really do anything consistently, and that includes calling penalties. What do I mean? Well, here's a video of a referee clearly telling Chiefs cornerback Legereus Need to put his helmet on to avoid a 15-yard personal foul. And when you understand the context of this situation, you'll understand why it's so frustrating. The reason this is so important is because referees aren't supposed to have leniency in personal fouls, especially if a player takes their helmet off in the middle of the field. Now, these are all bad calls, but are they as bad as Ravens linebacker Geno Stone hitting Justin Herbert not one but two steps out of bounds? And after the dust had settled, the referees called a penalty on the Chargers? Not just that, but after the penalty, the referees never told the crowd or the Chargers coaching staff that the penalty resulted in a loss of downs. So after an incomplete Justin Herbert pass, Brandon Staley was understandably angry and it was magically fourth down. Staley may have been angry, but not Bears cornerback Kyler Gordon, who couldn't help from laughing at the referees after he was penalized for taunting after taking his broken helmet off, which by the way, may or may not have been the inspiration for this video. You heard that correctly. Kyler Gordon's helmet had been broken due to a punch a Vikings player had thrown at him, which is actually a real penalty that the referee should have called, but they missed. And so since the helmet was broken, Gordon took his helmet off for safety reasons. And you seriously cannot make this stuff up. There have been way more bad calls this season, but none of them even come close to what was possibly the worst series of penalties, non-penalties, and just bad calls that happened all on the final series of the Packers and Chiefs Sunday night football game. After 59 long minutes of a hard-fought football game, the Green Bay Packers led the Kansas City Chiefs by eight points, and Patrick Mahomes had a chance to drive down the field with no timeouts left and add yet another notch to his highlight reel. Unfortunately for Patrick Mahomes, the Packers and NFL fans everywhere, we were robbed of this storybook moment because the referees honestly had no clue what they were doing. To start the first missed call of the drive, Patrick Mahomes scrambled to his right, gaining about nine or 10 yards to get near the first down marker. And while Patrick Mahomes had two feet in bounds, Jonathan Owens delivered what was a perfectly legal textbook tackle. And before I hear anyone say, but Mike, Patrick Mahomes was clearly giving himself up. Owens is entitled to hit Patrick Mahomes since he is a ball carrier. And the play was so close to the first down marker. Owens has to do anything he can from preventing Patrick Mahomes from getting the first down. What is he supposed to do? Just say, hey, here's the first down marker. Just go ahead and jump out of bounds and get that first down. Unfortunately, referees missed the memo. Or should I say the entire rule book as they called the play a 15 yard personal foul. But the problem with this was as a result of this horrible call, there will be makeup calls that would try to compensate for the bad call when they could have just not made a call to begin with, which is how you completely ruin football games. A few plays later, Patrick Mahomes found Marquez Valdez Scantling one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the field. And instead of playing actual defense, Packers cornerback Carrington Valentine hopped on Scantling's back and got a free piggyback ride all the way to the end zone. And of course, you guessed it, there was no flag. This was probably a makeup call or a makeup no call. Yeah, there's not much to say on that missed call. That one is as bad as any missed penalty this whole year. Two plays later, Patrick Mahomes found Valdez Scantling once again. And while going out of bounds, Valdez Scantling actually went backwards. Meaning since his forward progress had been stopped and he had been going out of bounds backwards, the clock should have kept rolling. However, the referees predictably stopped the clock. And to top it all off, on the final play of the game, Patrick Mahomes chucked up a Hail Mary, and well, there was more contact than five race cars going into a corner side by side. Yet again, there was no flag. Granted, there usually aren't pass interference calls on Hail Marys, but still, the amount of blown calls on that drive alone was enough to ruin what was, up to that point, an extremely entertaining football game. So this leads us back to the main point at hand. Why is this happening, and what is the NFL trying to hide from teams? To answer that question as simply as possible, the NFL is one of the only leagues in the entire world that doesn't like to communicate with coaches or front offices about what they're doing with their referees. Put it blatantly, what the NFL tells the referees to do, they do not tell NFL teams. For instance, if the NFL wants to place an emphasis on roughing the passer like they did a few years ago, they'll simply tell the referees, and as the games are played, out both fans and coaches must be able to adapt okay. to a rule interpretation that nobody knew about. A more recent example of this would be the NFL reducing penalties on the defense as previously evidenced. They clearly wanted to decrease penalties on the defense for whatever purpose they may have, maybe to increase scoring. I'm not necessarily 
necessarily sure. However, in the process of doing so, didn't tell any coaches, players, and obviously not even the fans. What this can lead to is confusion amongst coaches and referees about the interpretations of these rules, and even worse, just not calling penalties on plays that are obviously penalties. This doesn't change the amount of penalties happening on the field. All it does is increase the amount of blown calls, despite the fact on paper, there seems to be less flags. What the NFL should do instead of this is change the rules so that coaches and referees are more in agreement on what is and isn't a flag. In layman's terms, just be more transparent and communicate more. The only information fans get about what the referees will do in the upcoming season is whatever the NFL PA tells us, whatever leaks out of the owners' meetings, and whatever Roger Goodell feels like telling us. Also, the NFL just needs to train their refs better and hold them accountable. Maybe get full-time referees. A missed pass interference against the Packers and the clock being stopped by the refs despite forward progress being stopped on Sunday Night Football is just a case of the referees not knowing the rule book well enough. The fact that an NFL referee can get away with this stuff and then proceed to ref in a playoff game is genuinely mind-boggling. You're still hoping that the NFL can fix this refereeing epidemic soon because it truly is ruining the NFL. If you have any solutions as to how to solve this, let us know in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.